Season of the Seraph officially launched this week, and with it came the overhaul to the competitive survival playlist. Instead, we now have the competitive divisions ladder system playlist. You have to play seven placement matches, and the game will then put you in a rank on that ladder up to the highest possible placement of gold three and then you can start your climb from wherever it puts you. We did our placements, we got to gold three, and then we began our climb today and spent several hours total grinding away in the playlist. I came out of that long session with some positives and some negatives, some things I'm pumped about, some things I'm concerned about. And in this video, I'm gonna break those pros and cons down in a way that I hope is helpful feedback not just being whiny for the sake of impression farming. I really want this to succeed. So let's start with the good. In the several hours that we played as a pre-made fire team, we only matched a one team of solos. Every match, save for one, was against pre-made fire teams, and that's just fun. In a competitive environment, I wanna bring my friends and I wanna go toe to toe against you and your friends and see who can win that match. But if you're grinding solo, there's a freelance option so you only play other solos. Those are good things. The quest to chase your rose hand cannon, it's girthy. It requires some time investment. I like that. I like that I'm not just handed stuff on day one of the new season. I have some goals to chase, and for many players, that will give them something to do later in the season too when they get tired of the PvE grind. Another positive is that we don't have just one game mode in the playlist, we have a mixed bag. You've got 3v3 Rift, you've got Showdown, you've got Elimination, and I gotta tell you, I love Showdown. I think it can be tuned a little bit as a game mode, but honestly, I love playing Showdown and I always have. I, I usually get excited when it's up in the uh, rotating playlist, so it does help keep things fresh for sure, not having just one game mode in that playlist. Another positive is that it's about time that we have a number to chase. I want to see how high I can grind my comp rank up. I want to know just where I stand in this community. I have an idea of where I might fall and goals that I want to reach, but it would be good to know definitively how good I actually am. And the Rose Hand Cannon is a worthy thing to grind for. Just looking at the perk pool alone, it's stacked. So I'll be spending some time in the playlist for sure. But I do wanna move on to some negatives, some concerns, because it's definitely not all sunshine in the competitive divisions playlist. There are some things that really worry me and some things that downright confuse me. So first, let's talk maps. The map rotation in this playlist makes no sense to me. I consistently, over the course of several hours, got Disjunction, Cathedral of Dusk, Eternity, and Convergence, and Bannerfall. I mean, it wasn't until several hours had passed that I finally saw Javelin 4. I mean, most of the maps in the rotation are either ridiculously too big for competitive 3v3, for just six players on the map, they're just huge, or they're horribly imbalanced and just end up being doorway fights. Most of the maps I played today were maps that the community nearly unanimously dislikes. And this one just downright confuses me because we've been very vocal about what maps we like for years now. And they aren't new maps. They're literally beta maps from D2 and D1 maps. People love Endless Veil for 3v3. They love Javelin 4. They love Burnout. There are some great 3v3 maps that got Sunset, like Meltdown and Solitude and Gambler's Ruin. This would have been a great opportunity to bring one of those back. This was honestly an easy home run for Bungie because at this point they absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt which maps the PvP community likes and which ones they don't. And loading the playlist with these massive maps that play slow and especially don't do well with Showdown and Rift in a 3v3 environment, it's just downright confusing. This should have been an easy win for Bungie, but again their map selection continues to disappoint. Next concern of mine, some things just aren't polished enough for a high stakes game mode. There are some things that seem to have been overlooked. Take for example this match on Rusted Lands. It was a great match, very tight, very competitive match. So much so that we had to go to a tiebreaker sudden death round of Showdown. Now in Showdown, the capture point in the sudden death round, it spawns immediately and it can be captured. It's not like Trials where the cap point is shown, but it's locked for a short while so everyone can sort of get there and kind of fight over it and then cap it. It's not like that. It's immediately cappable. So we spawn at Water Tower for the tiebreaker round and the enemy team spawns at sea. The cap point spawns on their side of the map, just a short jog from the spawn. 
We literally have triple the distance to cover to get there to cap it than they do. And they can have it mostly captured by the time we do arrive. They can just put up a barricade on it. And we have to go through these tight choke points, these little tiny doorways, to get to that cap point. It's literally a free win for the other team. And that should have definitely been caught and tuned before it shipped, I think, because that's not new. That cap point has always been there, and we have actually given feedback on that specific cap point before. There are just a bunch of small things like this that seem to have been overlooked, and ultimately, they really, really matter. Another concern in our experience, the Rift game mode seems to be heavily weighted. Of all the matches we played today across several hours, only 18% of them were showdown. If there are three game modes, you would expect that number to be closer to 33%. Of all our games, only 22% were survival. Again, should be closer to 33. And of all of our matches, a whopping 60% of them were rift. That's nearly two thirds, that's nuts. I don't strongly dislike rift 3v3, I think it's okay. It's not my favorite mode of the three, it's probably my least favorite of the three, but it's alright. But it's certainly not good enough to justify getting it 60% of my matches. I would prefer that they tossed it out and brought back Countdown in the rotation, honestly. So between the terrible map rotation and then the heavy weighting of Rift 3v3, that means most of my matches are on maps I don't like and a mode I'm not overly fond of. So Rift can exist in this playlist, I think it's okay, but give it equal weight in the rotation as the others, please. My next concern is that all of these game modes do encourage passive play to a certain degree. Uh, in, for example, in Showdown, if you go up by two kills a lot of times, you're just gonna run back and hold up in a, in a stronghold position, and you're not gonna go out there and have gunfights. It's like, you know what, we got the first pick or two, Let's just run back to the spawn or run back to this room, post up some barricades and force them to push us. You know what I mean? Because it, it's based on how many or who has the most kills by the time time runs out. So it does encourage passive play in that regards. And then same thing with Rift a lot of times. And we did this too, because we, we want to win. We want to get points. There's times where we're up by a score. We beat them to the, uh, to the spark and it's just, I'm looking at the time and I'm like, guys, it makes more sense for me to run back to the end of convergence and jump up on that platform where you spawn and just crouch up there with the spark. Let's just do that and throw up a couple of barricades. They physically cannot win the match now. So these game modes, they encourage passive play and passive play wins games. And I don't like that. I hate that that is a reality. I hate that I feel forced to be passive in situations like that. And since passive play wins, many teams are running full invis hunters with Kepri's Sting so they can get wall hacks for free so they get to know where you are at all times through walls and only peek when they know that it's safe. It's free, crucial information. Take for example this instance on uh, Wormhaven where I get to the lane first, I scope in to, to see if I can stop them from scoring and the guy just does a dive to go invis and he is so far away from me but even from that far away he now knows exactly where I am and exactly where my head is without exposing himself at all. It's so unfreaking cool for a first person shooter in my opinion. It is ridiculous that this thing even exists in competitive play. Other teams are running triple sight and ramparts to put barricades up all over the place, to only take safe shots and never take any risks. It all leads to extremely slow and passive play. Part of me wishes that in the non-freelance playlist, they would make it so that you can only start the queue if your pre-made team has no repeat exotics. It should flash and not let you search for a match if you have three Kepri's on your team or three Sightons on your team. It should force you to diversify your team so there are no repeat exotics equipped across your team. That would be a cool improvement. That would speed things up, I think. All in all, the current sandbox is pretty unfun at the top end of the skill gap. Movement got extremely nerfed and passive exotics kept rolling in, slowing the game down dramatically. Destiny isn't as loose and fast as it once was, and to me, that's a net loss. The last concern I wanna talk about in this video today is the fact that the rank seems kinda pointless. I can't show it off, I can't flex it. I can't even see what rank my opponents are. That's literally the standard in any competitive game out there on the market with a ranked system. Every other ranked game right now, you can see your opponent's ranks and they can see yours. 
And it feels really bad that Destiny doesn't show that anywhere. There's no competitive title to chase that displays your current highest rank achieved as your title instead of like Dredgen or Unbroken. Ranks need to be shown in the ranked playlist at the very least. And at best, I should be able to then take my rank and wear it as a badge of pride anywhere else I go in Destiny if I opt in to do that. It seems like a real miss to have a ranked playlist where your rank literally cannot be shown to anyone at any time except for yourself. So there you have it. Those are my pros and those are my cons and concerns, but I'm anxious to hear about your experience. What has competitive divisions been like for you so far? Has it been fun? Has it been challenging? Has it been exciting or slow and arduous? Hey, unpack your experience for me below in the comment section, and thanks as always for watching the video today. Be warm and well-fed, my friends, and I hope to catch you in the Crucible.